Hi everybody, my name is Hassan Akmal and I am the Director of Business Career Services and the Chair of Career Education for Quinlan School of Business at Loyola University Chicago. I am also an adjunct professor and a faculty advisor uh, for a couple chapters of not-for-profits at Loyola University Chicago and serve on the advisory roundtable for the School of Nursing. We are going to be talking about how do we define the goal and dissolve the barriers when it comes to writing your story. And I'm talking about students that have a special interest, and talent, and, and are following their passion when it comes to a niche space. How are we going to teach students to join people, not organizations, when it comes to some of those niche spaces? And what I'm talking about are students that are interested in venture philanthropy, for example are interested in financial literacy and inclusion. And you'll see their attitude really determines their altitude when they are being aggressive and when they are really chasing their passion. Follow your passion. That can be scary advice, but that's the advice that I got, I don't know how many years ago, and I took it. And I took it not just once, I took it a second time, a third time, and a fourth time. And it's really, really important. Why? Because that's what it comes down to. We're going to be talking about developing your story in a niche space. Career alignment versus just finding a job. Authentic and organic networking. What's our role as a career development center? And then empathy. How important empathy is when it comes to student-driven feedback. For a moment, whether you're a career center listening to this, whether you're, you're an individual, whether you're a student, whether you are a career seeker, I want you to stop and think about yourselves. Think of yourself as an entrepreneur or think of yourselves as an entrepreneurial startup about to tackle this topic. Think broadly in terms of design thinking. You know, many people have entered the universities after careful considerations, after working hours and hours and hours uh, on their personal statements, on managing very carefully their entire entrance, their SATs, their applications and references, and just the entire admission screen was just so rigorous. And now they look at areas such as venture philanthropy or financial literacy and inclusion. And what becomes apparent is that the uniqueness and the uncertainty makes their life come alive, and it also makes their story come alive. So their ability to embrace their passion, to, to, to be brave and, and take a risk, an alternative to society pressures, for example. When I was growing up, my parents wanted me to be a doctor. In fact, I even got accepted to medical school. And so you can imagine the conversation that followed when I said, I want to play professional tennis. <laughs> and, you know, the same conversation my older brother had when he wanted to go into the game industry, the gaming industry, programming, right, instead of being a doctor. So we all know that the most talented people can flatten out if they don't love what they do. How can we help students with the framework and the tools to really help them navigate off the beaten path is the question. What can we do? How can we help them treat the process of exploration as being just as important as the destination? And I think what you'll see is that it comes down to helping them build a hypothesis to help them build everything that they know about themselves and everything that they don't know about themselves. Living laboratories, assembling people around you to challenge you, who can be your sponsors, who can be your thought partners, and who can enable you to be your own personal brand, to enable you to build your own personal board of directors to help you to get to that goal. That's so important. So it's about building a personal business plan. And I always talk about a personal business plan because just like any business plan, you test it and it doesn't always work and you make adjustments. And as you see things aren't working, you make modifications until it does work. And so essentially students are building that personal business plan. Interaction with the right people at the right time. And we actually, as a career development center, can play a big role in setting up those hot spots or what many universities are calling meetups. It's the traditional career fair challenge, right? Looking at our career fair 
model? Does that is it really serving the purpose that we really set it out to do? How do students feel about the career fair these days? What many students don't realize, especially international students, is when it comes to the concept of networking, it's totally new for them. And that it's not something that happens overnight. It takes genuine time. It's not about making something happen in an instant or asking for a job. In most cases, not even asking for a reference, but it's about things happening naturally and organically. So if you think about the challenges facing this generation of students, it's much more fragmented. We're working on building sort of a, an ecosystem of connections, a universe of jobs, internships, that are more reflective of the interests of our students. And we can use those student interests and preferences that students supply via new tools such as Handshake. We can use their profile information and then we can provide them with deeply personalized market intelligence, connections to alumni, and, and move away from these general email blasts and mass broadcasts that aren't really serving our purpose. So the student experience has got to be around career services and it's got to be reflective of our students and it's got to be reflective of the connections and the alumni network that we have. One way to do this is student advisory councils, thoughtful self-exploration, making sure that we are addressing that self-exploration process, making sure that we're helping them ask questions and challenge assumptions and to be critical and intentional when it comes to their decisions. How are we doing that? Are we just rushing to edit their resume? Are we just rushing to look at their cover letter? So how can we be more proactive in our outreach? What can we do? How can we help build networking that really helps them with their process, with developing that niche story? Imagine a senior class seminar with a trustee to talk about writing their story. Unbelievable. What an opportunity for a student. I personally fell in love with mission-driven work. Why? Because personally, it was just something greater than climbing a ladder. Many students want careers that maximize impact and purpose. Few of these jobs are filled through on-campus recruiting. Thus, how can we help students navigate these murky off-campus searches through advising nonprofit resources and employer programming? Thus, we need to create new best practices and capitalize on existing insights to help increase our career center's effectiveness and brand equity among students that want to do well by doing good. It's important that we take advantage of externship opportunities at community-based organizations and help these purposeful career seekers get clear visibility, get connected, and get hired for jobs in corporate social responsibility, sustainability, international development, impact and investing, social enterprise, and education reform. Service learning requires a combination of meeting specific learning objectives by completing some kind of community service work. These are very structured programs that require self-reflection, self-discovery, along with gaining specific values, skills, and knowledge required for success in the field. We can help them with that process. We can help them with interviewing versus interviewing, financial literacy, and inclusion. And I love this little flow chart when it talks about empowering consumers and improving lives. I used to be a financial advisor. I used to be a business development manager. I just wanted to get involved in socially responsible investments. And when I think about the marginalized populations, when I think about refugees, I remember days when there were NGOs that were coming and giving refugees loans on interest at 35%. 40%. It was like economic slavery. I couldn't bear to watch it. I would ask myself, are we really helping these people? And now students are coming to us in this new generation asking about financial literacy and inclusion. How can they help these people? It's incredibly exciting when I hear these students and it makes me so happy and I love just listening to their stories because in a sense they've already found their passion. And so, you know, when we look at companies and organizations that typically don't recruit, who may not have these huge recruiting budgets to get in front of students, what can we do to help them, regardless of expectations or recruitment? Right? How can we allow 
individuals to aspire? These are questions that we need to ask as career centers. We need to change and level the playing field in a sense as students begin to develop their niche story. They need to be a part of the experience. It's gotta be natural. It can unfold very fast with authentic transactions. You can become comfortable. Networking will happen asymmetrically, but equal access to those target companies is what we want. Venture philanthropy, engaging entrepreneurs and helping develop their skills. In my own NGO, Invitation Relief, we had venture philanthropists who would help us, not necessarily always with the financial aspect of it, but strategically. Samasource is a nonprofit social enterprise that employs marginalized women and youth who would otherwise be excluded from digital work. By giving work, Samasource helps low income people launch long term careers and move themselves out of poverty. Its mission is to alleviate worldwide poverty by connecting unemployed people in impoverished countries to digital work. It's one of the first organizations to engage in impact sourcing. And I bring up this organization because the founder, a graduate from Harvard, venture philanthropy was critical for this internet-based model called microwork to really break down large-scale digital projects from clients into smaller tasks for workers to complete. You have companies like Google that have joined this movement. And these workers are trained in basic computer skills and paid a fair wage. It's unbelievable. Paul Cartar, former director of the U.S. government Social Innovation Fund, is a huge proponent of venture philanthropy. And he'll continuously talk about how governments with diverse welfare models can make use of venture philanthropy and leverage their social impact. In fact, if you were to ask him, he would tell you that, you know, it's not about financial returns. It's about an investment-minded approach to social initiatives with their time and human and intellectual capital. It stresses long-term and strategic commitments to social organizations. Essentially, you're a strategic partner. Partnering with like-minded people has a multiplier effect. Success can be replicated. There's an old saying, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach him to fish, and you feed him for a lifetime. Venture philanthropy goes even further, as you can be a role model to others. You can accelerate social innovations, collaborate, and address social issues strategically. Sustainable and scalable social ventures. How beautiful. Everything that we're talking about comes back to inspiration, and that is something students need to use when developing their niche stories. More career centers need to think globally. The strategic framing coordinating targeted resources that collectively create systematic change. It's so important. Why does work matter? Samasource believes that work is the most effective and comprehensive way to reduce poverty. Through sustained employment, people invest in healthier food, education, safer housing and savings, lifting themselves and, and their families out of poverty. Simply put, a living wage transforms lives. When you think about developing your story in a niche space, it reminds me of the career development models for the 21st century. The first one is narrative theory. Narrative career theories are based around the concept of storytelling and making meaning from career stories. And you think about how important that is when students interview. Telling a story is something employers want to hear because it helps them really remember the student if it's enticing. While narrative approaches might seem to emphasize the past, they are focused on using a story to identify and understand the career problem. Shifting a focus to create the future story allows the student to move into planning and taking concrete actions. Story, as a fundamental part of career learning, has helped move theories that incorporate narratives into many practitioners' toolkits as an essential career development framework. These active interventions essentially include traditional activities such as taking internships, attending career events, speaking with recruiters, all of which can be powerful tools for students trying on new roles. Audience segmentation, customization, and differentiation are also very important. Audience segmentation is a fairly simple concept. The idea behind it is that different populations are driven by different motivations. So students also need to understand that certain audiences 
may not know what venture philanthropy is or financial literacy and inclusion. When it comes to networking, that can be challenging. This isn't to say that you need to create a unique message for every possible audience. However, you need to consider who your target audiences are for a given elevator pitch, and then ask yourself if that audience needs to be further segmented to allow for custom messages that speak to the needs and motivations of that particular audience. So what makes you special? How can students really stand out when it comes to their story? They're already going after a very niche space. So what can they do? Well, a marketing mentor of mine once said to me, if you're talking to everyone, you're talking to no one. By this, he meant that generic broadcast messages are less effective than personalized narrowcast messages. And I think that's something we need to keep in mind when it comes to our own career centers and some of our targeted email blasts um, that may, may not be as targeted as we think. So consider how much personalization we experience in our own daily lives. Amazon.com knows your purchasing habits, enough to make recommendations. Netflix as well. Facebook has an algorithm that shows you friend posts based on how likely they are to be interesting to you. So what are we doing when it comes to the interests of our students? Are we really tracking those interests? And if we are, by what tool? Handshake, for example, does a good job. At least they're trying, um, as they are still a new startup, but they are trying to, to mold themselves to be sort of that customizer when it comes to those student interests and, and really giving that intelligence back to both staff as well as the students. Virtual business cards, another great way for you to stand out. When it comes to being innovative, you have to understand that storytelling is a very powerful marketing tool. What makes it powerful? And innovative? Well, it can be iterative. It can be evolutionary. It can be revolutionary, and it can be different. We are talking about students connecting passion to purpose, yet we weren't doing much to help students connect passion to purpose. So we launched our own workshop that focuses on exactly that. Why? Because you matter. That was our message to students. So we wanted to help them explore their motivation to enjoy that journey and to help them connect that passion to purpose and be able to articulate that in an interview. We believe in the concept of connecting passion to purpose so much that we rebranded our career center. We also introduced a connector model called Bridge, and that stands for building relationships and interconnectedness directed towards graduation and fulfilling employment. What we also want to do is we want to create a center of gravity. We have to help each student create their vision for their career and really their life. We have to help connect them in personalized, multi-dimensional ways to people and resources. The personalization of every student to celebrate that individuality is something special. And then using technology in new ways to help capture new kinds of information that support and facilitate how we connect students with alumni and organizations, also to support that personalization. So the Career Development Office must be an informed connector, essentially. And it's all about the students. So the student-driven feedback is just incredibly important. It should be student-driven. We believed that mentorship was so important that when we looked at different tools, we saw certain tools that were really great at doing one thing, but not so great at doing another thing. And so the founder of Pivot Planet, powered by Revere Software, is an alumni of Loyola University. Chicago and he gifted LU Connect and it's our way of helping students organically and authentically network with alumni and friends of Loyola and it's been absolutely effective in fact we integrated the mentorship program into every single career development course which means that every single student because the career development course is mandatory is assigned a mentor before they graduate and now we're in the process of launching at the graduate level in the capstone course. So what are some key takeaways for assisting students in developing their stories, especially in these niche spaces? Well, by leveraging stories that exist naturally in our space, we can be a little bit more compelling to our audiences. Also, take away the idea of the booth. We need to create hotspots and meetups on campus where students can have those meaningful conversations and we need to figure out ways to bring organizations that don't normally recruit via career fairs. In fact, some organizations don't even post jobs. They recruit via social media. 
So get, getting those organizations in front of our students to have meaningful conversations with each other, alumni and employers, panels on provocative topics. We launched the Career Strategy Series, for example, which was extremely, extremely successful and effective because not only did they, students hear from a diverse panel, but they also were able to participate in breakout sessions following the panel and hear from those speakers in a much smaller classroom where they were able to learn and test their knowledge when it came to some of those fields. We need to introduce fun topics to get alumni perspectives on. Smaller events, similar themes. In our Q Passport to Success, we dedicate an entire section on making your pitch. Why? Because first impressions really do matter. Sure, you know that you need to look professional, but what will you say? So we ask students to use this space to write a 30 second elevator pitch that conveys their value to employers and why they should hire you for the position. Here you see it in bold. Make sure to connect your passion to purpose. When it comes to student-driven feedback and design thinking, we love ideation. Not only do we need student-driven feedback, but we need employer-driven feedback. The student council, our student advisory board at the undergraduate and graduate level use this board, and we just love seeing the ideas that come out of those meetings. Here's an example of introducing provocative topics in a career strategy series. In this series, we focused on digital identity and social media. We also focused on advancement and career transitions, as well as social impact. On a fun note, storytelling is evolving. And in this photo on the left is my older brother. Meet the duo who left DreamWorks for their very own virtual reality startup. And he's focusing on virtual reality, mixed reality, to help assist in the storytelling process. It's quite fascinating. I thought I'd share that with you, kind of as it relates to the whole big picture of storytelling and developing your stories. In conclusion, what I'd like you to remember is that developing your story is really an evolving process. It should be an evolving process. We need to help students frame and re-anchor themselves, to give them activities to test their analytical part of their brain with their own classmates in workshops to help them frame and tee up a process that can actually serve them for the rest of their life. Not focusing so much on the what, but back to the why. The what will logically follow the why. So we want to ask them the question in 10 years, how did career services help you? And hopefully that's where they'll say, that's where my story begins. Thank you.